for those of you who have to know Angus, i.e. Monkey Tail 2002, if he ever sends you a video and tells you to watch it, take my advice. Don't! He's evil like that. <sighs> okay. Okay. I'm gonna watch it anyway. And just because I'm such a nice guy, I'm gonna share my reaction to it with you. Link in the description. This video is entitled Illuminati, Freemasonry, Indoctrination, Evolution Over Creationism Debunked. I think we've got a real winner of a video here. Oh, I'm sensing spirit science level bullshit coming. <sighs> As we ended the last uh, play uh, in showing you the mortarboard or the uh, graduation cap uh, and its reference to Freemasonry and Masonry. Now let's begin this play with this quote, ostensible control over the knowable by marketing institutionally accredited science as the only path to true understanding. That That's a quote by someone named Daniel Posner. P-O-U-Z-Z-N-E-E-R. Link to the website where I found the quote below. My question is, who the fuck is this guy and why the hell should I fucking care? Institutionally accredited science is the only path to knowledge, meaning that if you're not going to uh, be a scientist and accredited, you have nothing to say. That is patently false. Kind of agree. The problem is, no scientist ever actually said that! Ugh. Now, if you want to understand the natural world, yes, guess what? You actually go out and observe the natural world and then figure out how it works. That's science! If you're not taking part in science, then guess what? You can't say shit about how the natural world works. Another thing. You can actually go out in lot, most of the cases, sometimes you need fancy equipment to actually do this kind of stuff, but in theory, as in not the scientific world, you know, in it's actually somewhat possible for anyone to go out and do this stuff, provided they have the right equipment. Or sometimes it's even stuff you can do in your home. Uh, it's demonstrable. It's repeatable. If you don't know that, and you're just instead saying, oh, this happened because it says it in this here ancient book, no. You can't say shit because you haven't been out there and actually seen how things work. That's what someone in science would say. Of course, they probably moderate their language a lot more than I would. And let's continue. There are all kinds of people with knowledge and wisdom in esoteric and academic realms, and uh, they are just discarded. In this case, uh, look at what you are taught in uh, as a main uh, curriculum, which is evolution, the origin of species by means of natural selection, and look at the alternate title, Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. One guess where he's going with this. races, and this idea that not all races were created equal. They've now since said that diversity is the way to go, uh, but this gave rise to huge uh, racism uh, and treatment of other racial groups. Is anyone really uh, surprised uh, that he completely this, uh, missed with the uh, lower subhuman uh, standard? Ugh. Back in Darwin's time, Heck, even today, races just means variations. Even in Darwin's book, it's really just talking 
about preservation of favored traits. Those traits that are better able to survive in a particular environment. Now, it so happens that when evolution occurs, it's usually one species gets separated into two groups. Those two groups develop different traits. That makes them different races. And what happens is, as one environment change, as one environment, one or bo even both of them change, the traits that are in that group that can better fit the new environment survive. That's what that means. It doesn't mean we get to go out and slaughter everybody and Darwin never fucking said it. Stop attributing shit like that to Darwin. For his time, he was actually very anti-slavery, anti-bigotry. Perhaps by modern standards, not so much. But he was very progressive in his day. And that's saying something. Continuing. And look at what they've also done to uh, the disabled and mentally retarded and using, uh, studying hu uh, humans as guinea pigs, giving rise to eugenics, and this idea that we have to move uh, evol evolution through uh, the, the alteration of genetic breeding. Darwin never said that. The United States. And look at the understanding of what Christians believe, the fact that my mom got a prenatal diagnosis. In fact, I would say that Darwin be, would be against any kind of artificial breeding like this. He might even be against GMOs. I'm personally kind of eh, neutral. I can see the benefits, but I'm also highly against monoculture. So I'm just putting that on the table because it's kind of related to this. Oh, oh. However, what would happen if we pick traits that actually aren't capable of surviving should the environment change? Guess what? We're freaking screwed. That's not how evolution works, and it's not supported by the theory of evolution, and nor would it have been supported by Darwin. Continuing. Was not wrong telling my parents I was not worthy of life was wrong. This is a precious life uh, to Christians. Every life is precious, and they are worthy and deserving of life. As a matter of fact, the parents that have these types of, of children revere life more, and they love their children. And yes, it's a pain and a struggle, but gosh, the value and the lessons learned in this are invaluable for us. And very good to the parents who have the patience to put up with that. I applaud them. Are we happy? Priceless. In this case, uh, look at Stephen Hawking in this ridiculous statement. Because there is a law such as gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. Yes. That is because gravity is a negative energy whereas matter is a positive energy. Ergo, the total energy in the universe is zero. That's what he's saying there. <sighs> nice quote, mine. You're the one who's ridiculous because you don't understand what he's saying and you're not even trying to understand it. Well, there, if there wasn't a law such as gravity, what would he be saying? But there is a law, and there has never been a law without a lawgiver, a lawmaker. And so they have... Oh, that old fucking straw man again. Uh, a law in science is simply something that is always true in a specific circumstance. That's it. Sorry, that's not even... That's equivocation. That's not a straw man. My mistake there. Oh, you... Continuing. Replaced gravity as 
uh, with uh, God with gravity, and that uh, creating something out of nothing. Well, our God is is capable of that and has created this space time matter uh, situation that we're in. I but God is irrelevant in that equation. The architecture of the universe and the order and the laws of the universe. Look at how these things are arranged structurally. Look at how DNA is arranged as a language or code. It's not a language or a code! Laws and language. And laws and language come from intelligent sources. And this idea that, in you know... Um, no, uh, they don't! Intelligence has not created man. Look at the structure of this. It is obvious. This is... <sighs> Do I really need to get into debunking the whole argument from design here? Please tell me I don't. Pratt. Point refuted a thousand times. Fuck you, Angus. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. I thought he hit play there. This is what they lead us to believe, that we've they. evolved like this, lost the hair, and then look at this is actually a, a video game, uh, and then this man is fully clothed, and he's a uh, character in a video game. Look at the other alternate uh, evolution here as a monkey. Oh, sending, for fuck's sake. Um, Oh. I'm sorry, this is not true. Adam now was... Just go to timeline somewhere about 340 in that video and take a look at the images. I'm not downloading this thing. Oh, how, 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 how. Okay, might be a little bit of repeat here because I had to go back to look up the time index. But true. Adam now was the first man, biblically. You can see the length of years, uh, over 900 years they lived. You can see that even in the Babylonian it's written in a kings uh, fucking long. Book. So when we it's see this myth. reference biblically, we can see a world civilization's timeline. And these are very similar as far as the length. So uh, as far as uh, when Adam came to be is about this area uh, about give or take a thousand years let us continue off, for a little bit. but from the rise of civilization to the first man, we can even see that anthropologically that that's the case. Archaeologically, we know that there were thriving cities around when Adam was supposedly created. Just see Aaron's Aaron Ra's video. Uh, one moment in time or one day in history, I'll include the link to it below. Uh, very, very good video, by the way. Unlike this one. Look at the similarities in the legends of cultures around the world Assyrian, all the way to Hawaii and Sumatra. Look at the destruction by water. All of these. <sighs> People need water to live, ergo most civilizations evolved in areas around water. Uh, no surprise then that there are a lot of water and flood myths because they're built along rivers and lakes and... Ah! Nine looks like 95% at least, all black, and this is the flood. You can see the ark provided here, the similarities between these legends. Look at the... Uh, okay, question for you. I have to think, uh, I think it's Bob to Bits who posted this. Okay, so how long after the flood was the Tower of Babel built? Now consider that there were six people on the ark, as in three couples, who were, who after the, the supposed flood, were still fertile and produced offspring. Populate the cities required. Go ahead. I'll link to Bob to Bits video down below too. Have fun.
good luck explaining it. And yeah, this is just stuff from that's within your Bible. Chinese characters. Let's look at this one. You can pause the screen if you need to. Uh, the devil, gardener field, alive, secret, man or son. So he was in a garden, secret, he's alive, man or son. The tempter, this is interesting. Here's the devil. Here's a tree and a tree, which means they have two trees, which is the tree of knowledge of the good and evil, the tree of life. I know and nothing cover, about Chinese cover. characters, so but I'm going to show this to a few Chinese is, uh, friends of mine and see what Nestle, they think. Eight Mouth, I imagine they're people. going to tell me this, this guy's full of bullshit. Because uh, uh, guess what? I already knew that. In Japanese to my wife, and she was astonished with that. This is she was astonished with this as well in the biblical connotation. <laughs> create dust and mud, alive mouths or uh, uh, people, uh, and walking. So the person. Person walking. So you have eight miles over here for the boat, but this is a this person. This kind of reminds me of numerology. Out of the dust and mud, and that is the creation story in the oldest language uh, uh, that is known to exist uh, now. Uh, look at the Freemasons. Which predates um, your Bible, and it book. also predates, you, you know, the. Uh, let's look at. That flood. Uh, how do you explain that? Yeah, they're all Analusis, by the way. But A-L, Analusis, or the Year of Light, they add 4,000 years to this one would be 1823. Adding 4,000 years would be 5823. So they are referencing the Earth Numerology. at about 6,000 years old. But their Year of Light is the Year of Intellect. And so this is what they push. And then what they're going to be pushing here, I believe, not too long in the future. Aliens... <laughs> okay, he also had a, uh, an Egyptian uh, mask on the aliens now altering man's uh, DNA, uh, going from ape to human, and you can see all of the uh, logos here. Now moving on with uh, Richard Dawkins, the quintessential atheist. Um, now in the God Delusion, in this movie, it's spelled, he actually, uh, this is Ben Stein there, he actually says that the possibility of panspermia, which is that we might find a signature in our DNA that would allude to a fact that uh, we were genetically engineered, no, that's not what he said, and that's not what panspermia means. Panspermia means that our constituent building blocks, i.e. the amino acids, the building blocks of uh, DNA, I'm sorry, I can't remember the names of the exact blocks off the top of my head right now, or possibly even RNA and DNA itself, could have formed in space and then landed on the planet. That's what panspermia means. It doesn't mean that there's some kind of alien signature in us. Oh. <laughs> Ow. Is my brain coming out of my ears? You see this in the movie Prometheus as well. So here's an atheist. <laughs> as if, oh, this is something people actually say happened, or science, or whatever. Oh, you... You're a moron. And for the record, I really did not like that movie. I hated it. A friend of mine, some friends of mine really liked it. I thought it was a complete mess. Ugh... I've got just about 1 minute and 45 seconds left to go in this. Now, uh, giving you the possibility that we were uh, genetically seated on this planet. And, uh, Again, that's shot. not what panspermia so means. Is aliens. No, it's so not! Transhumanism now, moving oh, into the future, and this is just an example of where monkeys to robots... And so we need to 
uh, since we don't have enough time anymore and science is advancing, we need to advance ourselves with cybernetic technology, and this is going on now. Here is a triple helix designing a new molecule for life. But this was actually uh, promoted or, uh, or shown in the movie Tron. The woman uh, actually had a triple DNA strand. <laughs> I think he's getting Tron confused with the fifth element. For the record, the article he's quoting is from Scientific American. Correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think that's an actual peer-reviewed journal. That's just speculative writing. That maybe we could do this and maybe it'll work. It's not saying we can change ourselves to be like that. For one thing, that wouldn't work. Uh, uh, it, it's saying that maybe we, maybe we, as in scientists and genetic engineers and all that, could possibly create a self-replicating molecule in this form. But it's all hypothetical. There's no actual science behind it. That so far as I know. It's just saying maybe this is possible. Uh, one minute left. Just showing you that creation, we have been created, and this is design. It screams design. We've been designed. No, it and screams so patterns, and patterns can form without and design. Not understanding where our origins are, uh, we have a fascinating past. If we were to believe that, that part's true, the, all, everything in the past is all myth. With everything that they've done uh, anthropologically, that you can see on uh, uh, tombstones in Egypt and uh, all of that hieroglyphic uh, uh, depictions and depictions of half man, half beast. We this is actually in the Bible, um, and uh, genetic alteration is in the Bible. Let's understand. Uh, all of this. Genesis 6 is the sons of God coming on the daughters of men and so we can see there is alteration genetically there is creation and this is a logical thing to understand for us. I think there's only one way to end this video. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response, were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought? Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul.